Hi, this is Phil from Simply Rhino. This is the second video in the tutorial looking at creating production quality surfaces from 2D design intent. The starting point for this exercise is a series of 2D drawings presented in Adobe Illustrator and we'll look at quickly reconstructing some of the major construction curves in Rhino before producing a series of surfaces from the minimum of curve input. The emphasis is on creating high quality surfaces relatively quickly before arriving at the final 3D solid model. This tutorial is in three parts and this is part two. So having created the body and the handle the next task is to model the spout. Now the spout is fairly well defined here in terms of its boundary curves but it's likely that we'll need to do a little bit of investigation or experimentation to see how the the bottom of the spout transitions. It looks here as though we go from something that's fairly sharp to something that blends out to a wider uh, sort of overall blend at the bottom of the spout and you can see there's quite a bit of sharpness here at the front of the spout. So let's first of all turn on the side elevation and go to the left view and then let's open up our new 2D curves layer and we'll call this spout curves uh, change the layer color of this and make this active and I'm going to lock my side elevation here and I'm just going to trace off some curves here again using the um, interpolated curve command. So again I'm just picking in as few places as possible here so I can get this shape about right and I'm going to extend both of these curves again using the by arc option and with both of these curves I want to make them slightly over long particularly this top one okay what I want to have here are two curves which uh, are going to have a good relationship to each other so that if I choose to use a sweep or possibly a loft here that the curves are roughly have a, a perpendicular relationship to each other so that my surface uh, builds in a nice uniform way to help me do this, um, I'm going to create a, uh, an average of these two curves in the center. But before I do that, I'm just going to rebuild each one of these curves to degree three for control points. I'm just going to have a look here. We're a little bit away from the, the intent here, but because this bottom is the area of the bottom of the spout is the area that I'm going to uh, probably be iterating a little bit. I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. So uh, I'm going to create a, uh, a mid curve between these using the tween curves command and pick the start and the end curve and uh, just want one here. And then uh, the reason for doing this is so I can create a perpendicular line from here using the both sides option which will give me something that I can trim the top and bottom curves with because as I say I want to maintain this perpendicular relationship So just trim these away now uh, and now we've got a sort of better relationship between these two curves. So these will be on the, the center line of my geometry. I've had the project um, on and the next curve I need to establish is going to be roughly midway between these two curves. These are the tangent uh, curves and if I go roughly midway between these um, 
should give me a curve in, a, in approximately the right position. So I'm going to use an offset curve here and I'm going to use the through point option and just find roughly a midpoint here. And then I'm just going to check how many points this has. Again, it needs rebuilding. And we should see that this will have need a little bit of extending here. Again, just to make this the same length or have the same relationship as the other curves. So I'll rebuild this again because I've extended it. And then this curve um, I can position uh, in its 3D position and I can do this by opening up the plan view and going to plan and turning on the control points and moving this curve over. Okay, as well as moving, of course, I can use the nudge keys here, which is um, Alt plus the arrows to do this. And this is probably a little easier to use out plus the arrows here. Now it's going to take a little while to get this right. I want to keep these points in their position um, along the, the, the global y-axis here. Again, it will just give me more options when I want to create a better surface. Okay, so that looks reasonably okay. And if we go back to our left view here, we'll see that curve is in its, its same position in, in, in our left view. So now I can mirror that curve with the copy option on and mirror this along the global y-axis. So we now have some curves that we can start to build the spout from. So next we can start to create some spout surfaces. So I'm going to create a new layer here on my surface layers and call this spout surface outer. I'm going to make this active. I'm going to turn off the elevations in place, uh, make sure my project is off and go to a, a perspective view. Okay, so the aim of this exercise um, is that we're using minimum amount of curves to define surfaces here. So I can use the top three curves here to define the top of the spout and the two outer top curves and this curve here to define the lower half of the spout. And I'm going to initially use loft here to create these curves. So I'm using a, a normal loft, which is an interpolated loft, and I'm using the do not simplify option, which gives me a nice clean surface. And I'm going to build two lofts here. That will give me my spout shape. Now the main thing about this is this spout here is not sharp enough. If you remember the uh, when we talked about the shape earlier on is that we want to have a, um, a tighter um, if you like radius at the bottom of the spout here that transitions to something that's um, a little more blended at the bottom. 
So this is fairly easy to, to fix and uh, we've got a, a way that we can do this reasonably interactively. But before I do that I just want to check on the, the bottom shape of the spout. So I'm going to very quickly turn on my outer surface. I'm just going to generate an intersection curve. So curve from objects and intersection. And then just turn the, the body surface outwards. And I'm then going to go to my so back and I'm going to turn on the spout elevation and just hide that surface. We just want to see how my intersection, just want to see how that matches with what's on the CAD. It's actually not too bad. It's not quite there, but it's not too bad. Okay, so that's just a quick way of, of checking my surfaces against the, the elevations. So turn everything back on again. And what I really want to do now is to look at sharpening up this uh, front edge. And there's a, there's a reasonably uh, nice way that we can, we can do this. I'm going to turn off my uh, curves here and get rid of this intersection curve. So first of all, what I'm going to do is to split this lower surface um, at its midpoint here, which is marked out by this isocurve. So I'm going to use split at isocurve. I'm going to make sure that the shrink option is enabled. Okay, that gives me uh, an untrimmed surface when I um, split with an isocurve. Okay, so next up I'm going to look at creating a surface here that we can use to actually create uh, a shape change in this front. So if we look at the two halves of the spout together, we're effectively going to put a crease in the front of the spout to sharpen up this end. So to do this, I'm going to just create a line, let's say of a nominal length, let's say 20 millimeters long, and then I'm going to go to transform and orient and perpendicular to curve and I'm going to orient this so that it's perpendicular to this edge. I'm going to have the copy option on and I'm going to put that line at each end of the uh, this surface edge. And then I'm going to set a C plane that's perpendicular to the edge. So use C plane perpendicular to curve. And I'm going to take this object and I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to rotate it through something like 25 degrees here. Then set my C plane back to where it was previously. Okay, so the idea now is that I'm going to create a surface, a, a sort of a dummy surface or a sacrificial surface that I'm really only going to use to match to. So I'm going to create a, a sweep one rail here and I'm going to sweep using that surface edge as a rail and these two curves as cross sections. Now obviously this cross section here at the bottom is perpendicular to the rail this is 25 degrees out of the out of uh, perpendicular. So, in other words, my surface will be tangent at the bottom here, and 25 degrees out of tangent at the top. And to help this along, I'm going to use the align with surface option here as well. Okay, that will just try to help the the. Uh, that this wants to, to give me a, a, a surface that's aligned tangent where possible here. Now of course here it's going to pull this out of tangent. Okay, So this surface we're not using to actually build with, we're really using this just as a means to an end to match to. So if I take this surface now and match it to this and use uh, create a, a tangent match it shouldn't change the shape at the bottom but should change it at the top. Okay, so I'm going to go to Surface, Surface Edit Tools, and Match, and pick the surface that I want to change, 
and the surface that I want to match to and I want to match for tangency and I'm not too worried about the other end of the surface don't want to average the surfaces of course I don't need to refine the match refining the match here will add more points to the surface this is not what we want to do in this case and I can OK that okay now if I just delete that surface and these curves and now mirror the spout what we should see here now is that the bottom is still going to be tangent and we should see a crease that gradually washes out Now, of course, I don't really need the sharp crease here. I want this to be softened. And if I was to join these two surfaces together and use um, either a fillet edge or a blend edge along here, let's say with a radius of about three millimeters, um, and I chose distance between rails here, um, this would most likely fail where we ran out of room along here. Um, I should be able to get uh, a rolling ball fillet to propagate but in either case using the the solid fillet or blend tool here will give me uh, a three-sided surface which basically runs to a point down here where uh, we achieve um, uh, almost no shape change uh, at the bottom of the spout. You can see that the width of this isn't particularly controllable and also that three-sided surface is is slightly problematic. Um, this part of the shape here um, might look right but um, certainly down here this isn't the geometry we want. Now I'm just going to take a look at this with the environment map on just to see if this actually looks sharp enough at the top. That looks kind of not bad for what I wanted there. So you can see there's a, a good definition there about that edge. So what I'm going to do is to just um, duplicate the uh, edge of that blend just there and then I'm going to copy that just to the clipboard and I'm going to undo a few steps here to go back to my um, surfaces and then paste in that curve and I'm going to just separate these two surfaces I only need to work with one of these and I'm going to try again going to um, splitting with an ISO curve and I'm going to snap onto that end of the of the curve and I'm going to do that again making sure that I have the shrink option on and then remove this and then mirror the spout again and then we're going to create a curvature continuous blend using blend surface between the two edges so I'll go for G2 and I'll preview this and of course I can make this blend slightly sharper or less sharp using this tool here. Let's leave it about there, that looks good. Okay, because the blend tool is blending in a curvature, conti curvature continuous way, we should see that in real terms we've still not changed the surface much down here, but we've put in this slightly more defined crease into the top, not crease, sort of slightly sharper radius that blends out. Okay, so you can see that there, you can see how that is sharpish there and then blending out. That looks quite good, so I'm going to join this back together again. Before I do too much uh, on these surfaces, it's probably a good idea to offset them. Now, the general offset of the body is 3 millimeters, but I'm going to go for a little less on the spout and rather than doing this as a solid or a, a shelling operation I'm going to create uh, separate surfaces here this just gives me a little bit more scope later on so I'm creating a new surface I'm going to call this 
uh, spout surface inner and I'm going to take a look at offsetting uh, this lower half of the spout so I'm going to use offset surface here and one of the things that's likely to happen here is that because this blended area here is quite small it's quite possible that this may deform and these two side surfaces may cross over themselves when we uh, offset this so let's just take a look I'm going to use the distance of two and a half millimeters here rather than three millimeters just to keep the spout slightly thinner and um, let's just run that command and you can see here that this has really mangled the blend here is that uh, the offset here has not worked uh, correctly so we may be better in this instance just exploding this front part here and offsetting these individually like this and then if I just hide these front surfaces here you'll see I should have room now to just create the blend manually at the front here and just manually create this part of the B surface check that it joins together and we should see here that you know even though this is a B surface we can get a very nice reasonable surface here that looks pretty nice and smooth so I'll offset this other part of the surface and show in the other parts and then I need to look at uh, curtailing the top and the bottom so I can trim everything up so I'll go to my left view I'll re-enable the side elevation I'll go to a, a wireframe view and then I can see this angle at which this is cut back here so I'm just going to draw a line here just use the tab key here to snap the direction and I can use that line to trim away the various parts here okay and then I'll just neaten up this lower edge as well so I can do the same there just turn on the elevation again I just want to make sure that I um, don't come too far inside here so let's go here and trim this out okay so let's go now to the outer surface and take a look at this and join it together and go to the inner surface and just trim this up here so I'm going to just generate a nicer curve here sorry I'm just going to generate uh, an intersection and trim with that intersection if I can pick the right object there we go and then join this together select any curves and delete them turn on the spout here and then whether I do this now or whether I do it later I can just cap off this front face here let's do that now it may be that I have to uh, remove that later so I think what I'll do is I'll create the the, the front face here I'm going to use planar curves and I can just pick all of those curves on that edge that just creates a planar curve there now later on we're going to need to run a, a fillet down the inside edge and the outside edge here of the um, of the spout 
and then run a fillet around here. Now for now what I'm going to do is to put that end surface on the outer spout surface layer and I'm not going to join all this together as yet. Um, it might be better to, to join this to the uh, to the body first of all. So let's just have a look what we've got now. We should have um, body and handle now. Okay, important thing to check here before we go far too far is that our inner surface here of the spout is clearly intersecting with the inner surface of the um, uh, of the uh, of the body, which it is. So now that we have these components created, the next step is to create the top surface and the bottom surface, and then I can start to join the individual parts of the pot together. So I'm going to turn all of the surfaces off. Uh, except for the outer body surface. I'm going to turn on the side elevation uh, in place and then set my view to the left view and move to a wireframe view. Now the surface um, that creates the top of the lid is also going to be the same surface that creates this top portion of the pot. So in other words, I can create one large base surface here and use this uh, to fulfill both roles. So I've created a new layer here called Top Curves. And first of all, I'm just interested in where this intersection point between this curve here and the side curve of the object is. So I'm just going to draw an interpolated curve here, just tracing over the top of this curve here and I'm going to extend this using the by arc option and I'll just run that until I get that intersection there and that intersection point is where my theoretical intersection or the sharp edge is. Okay now um, I could trace off a curve along here but there's a couple of things I want to do here. I want really to have slightly more curvature in this surface or curve than I've got here. And I'm going to start this on the center line here and rather than drawing uh, an interpolated curve, another process I could use here is to try take a straight line because I know where the start and the end of the curve is. I can rebuild this to the usual um, for this exercise degree 3 uh, with a point count of 4 and then turn on the control points and this control point here I need to set at the same height as this point here so I can just set this in Z snap to there and then this point here I can just move upwards Now it may help here to have the curvature graph on because it's probably quite easy to get a bit of an S shape going on in this curve here. So I'll go to Analyze, Curve, Curvature Graph on and we'll uh, analyze the shape. And that's where you can see here we're getting this negative curvature here. So I'm going to take this point here and move it along. And you'll see as I'm moving this along how the shape changes. It's probably not too bad where it was there but this point here needs a little bit of work. Rather than using move, let's use the nudge keys and just push this point up. And you see as I push this point up here the curve starts to get all positive. Now then I can move this point along maybe push this one down slightly gradually get something that looks a bit better. What I want is a curve that just gradually sort of um, gets a little tighter as it gets to the top. Something like that looks quite good. Okay, now where this meets the uh, the surface here, um, 
this surface, because of the way that we built it, is uh, elliptical um, as we take cross sections through it. So if I take uh, an isocurve from here, snap to that point there, then this should be a nice pure curve. Okay, as you can see here when I turn the points on. So I can use, as I have done before, a rail revolve here to build this top surface. So I'll create a new layer. I call this top surface outer and make it active. Turn off the elevation in place, turn off the body surface outer and just reset my C plane here and do a rail revolve. So profile, rail, describe the axis and that's the resulting surface. Turn on the body surface and I just want to check this for example against the handle elevation. Okay, Again you see we've just got that slightly bit more curvature to it which is what I want. That looks good. Okay, so that's the main surface for the top. So I can duplicate this layer and objects and just change the name of this. This is going to be my lid surface. And I can also um, offset this as well to give me the, uh, the main inner surface of the lid and the inner surface of the top of the pot. And for this I'll just use an ordinary uh, offset. The distance I want is 3, so I'll offset to a tolerance, to a reasonably good tolerance this time. I'll keep this at the absolute, absolute uh, modelling tolerances. And um, flip the direction, and that's my inner surface. Okay, so put this on a new layer. So I'll put this on a, on a new layer. And again, duplicate layer and objects, and this will be my inner surface of the lid as well. So we can probably now add the local detail into the, the top surface of the pot before we actually join it onto the rest of the pot. So I'm going to go back to the top surface outer and go to my top view here and turn on the uh, plan for my elevations in place. And I'm just going to check unlock the plan here. I'm just going to check here. That's the aperture in the top surface and there's a recess about here. So let's have a look at the section. I 
you can see that we've got a, a recess here. Now on the side section this recess will change locally. So what we can actually model here now is just a general recess and then cut this D shape out of it. That's essentially what we've got here. So we could do this uh, in a number of ways um, and probably because we've got a, a section here um, we can use Rail Revolve uh, to help us out with this. So all I need to do here is to draw um, this portion here and I'll draw it without the radii. So we draw a line here. This can be over long and here. And this doesn't need to go all the way to the middle but it wants to be just slightly longer than this portion here. Okay, and then I can turn all this information off here and I can just connect these two curves. So I use the connect command here, just joins those together. Okay, so go back to perspective. Just switch to wireframe just for a moment. So I'll go to this curve and I'll offset it by my thickness, which is three. I'm going to build the uh, the inner and outer recess at the same time here for the pot. So surface, rail revolve, that's the profile, that's the rail, that's the start of the axis, and that's the end, and then we'll repeat this built this on the wrong layer so that should be on top surface outer and then let's make top surface inner the active layer now and repeat the rail revolve with a bigger curve So that's what we've created there. So if we go to top surface outer now, we'll just turn off our curves and these two can be trimmed with each other. I generally like to just create an intersection curve here, trim with the intersection curve. and then do the same with the top surface inner and then we can look to that D shape so I go back to my plan view turn on the plan view and that is the cutout. Now let's just have a look what the geometry is like for that. We can't use those curves, they're not good enough. So just for a moment let's copy that curve onto our top curves layer just going to use that as a reference. Okay, so there it is. Now, again, this should be elliptical, so if I find an intersection here, if I can find one, it's actually finding an end point. There's the intersection. That point there, and I mirror that point around the origin.
image in and then I'll just draw a quick guide curve out here or line rather and find an intersection of that and then mirror this Okay, so I've not now got the four points uh, I can draw an ellipse through. So these curves can go, and I can just turn on my top curves layer here, and I'm going to draw an ellipse now. I've turned on project just uh, to make sure that I snap correctly here. I'll do an ellipse from center. Center of the ellipse will be at zero, and then snap to one of the points here for the major axis and another point for the minor axis. Then draw a line from both sides through where the D shape is. Just turn off the surfaces, turn off, delete the reference curve and then trim these up with each other. Okay, so that's the shape of my D created with some nice clean curves. Turn on the top surface inner, sorry, top surface outer. Just push that curve upwards. And turn on top surface inner just push that curve up slightly more and we'll just extrude this straight and then we can trim this out so trim the top of this with the top surface so I'll create an intersection curve again let's turn the curves off to make things less confusing and repeat the surface with the bottom okay so that's the sort of top part of the pot there let's make sure we don't have any curves that we don't need there and any points okay turn on the body surface outer and you can see now we've got a the, the top there we just need to trim that around and that's ready to go so that's the top surface next up it's the bottom surface and then we start joining things together so we can see what happens with the bottom surface here when we look at this section through the coffee pot the inside surface is just a straightforward planar cap really the bottom surface has got a little relief to it here so um, I'm going to just draw some curves here I've of course created a, a layer to, to do this on and I'm going to draw a line along here and I'm going to draw a line around about here just following that direction here and then try an adjustable curve blend between these okay so this point needs to come down here somewhere this one over there there we go so I just want a gradual tangent blend around there Okay, so that looks good. And let's now draw a line here. Turn off the sections and our surfaces just for a moment. Trim all this up. And join this together. Okay, if I turn on my surfaces again, 
to perspective set my sea plane to world top and create a new surface layer here make that active I can do another rail revolve turn off project of course while I do this shade that up okay that's my base surface there just a little over large so now we can really start to think about uh, trimming the various pieces together and joining our various components. Now before we do this we might want to take a copy of all of these surface layers here and put them on uh, another set of layers purely so that if we need to go back to the surfaces in their pre-trimmed state uh, we've got a copy of those. Thanks for watching and please do check out the third and final video in this tutorial.